Happy New Year, everyone. It's 2021, a brand new year. We've escaped 2020, but National Ninja League remains the same in our commitment to bring you the finest quality in ninja competition. And we will still give you updates about all the qualifiers happening, hosted by America's favorite ninja host, me! Hello everyone, it's Monday. You know what that means. It's time for yet another edition of Ninja Lab. Like always, we're going to be going over some of the results from the Elite Division qualifiers. And I can't think of a better way to kick things off than to start with the results for the second qualifier held at Austin Ninja's Cedar Park. Austin Ninjas was feeling merry with an all-star cast of competitors, and for the elite female division, in second place was Olivia Colosano. Olivia was just dominant through the first half of this course, getting through stuff like the Devil Steps and the Spider Walk and some of those balance obstacles with no problem, and she was able to complete the Merry Merry Snapback baby as they call it but unfortunately when transitioning to the uh very very challenging unstable boards called twas the board before christmas she was unable to maintain her grip in the transition which unfortunately t means that she is out in that position but she does qualify for the south central regional finals <laughs> With that said, in first place was Isabella Wakeham. Now, most people, male and female, could not complete the Twas the Board before Christmas because, let's be honest, those unstable boards are quite treacherous. And this included some top tame nin ninjas like Thomas Stillings and Matthew Day and David Wright, but Isabella laughed in the face of the boards. She got through all the obstacles that were before those. Circuit board, no problem. Devil steps, no problem. J jumping spider, no problem. Snapback, ha, she laughs in the face of snapback. She was able to clear the boards as well and was only one of the few people to even reach the next obstacle afterwards, which was unfortunately the vertical limit, which is a borderline impossible obstacle for most ninjas. And unexpectedly, like most of the people who made it that far, she fell at that point of the course, but an amazing run nonetheless. <laughs> Hey look, it's the Kingdom Ninja Daniel Gill, and for good reason, he finished second in this qualifier which allowed him to qualify for the South Central Regional Final, but after his second place finish at this most recent NNL World Championship, are you really surprised that Daniel Gill did well? No, you shouldn't be. Of all the people who cleared Twas the Board before Christmas, he did it the fastest. But unfortunately, similar to his run at the NNL Worlds, the vertical limit continued to be his kryptonite, as even though he was able to make it about half the way through, his grip ultimately gave out and he went down on that particular portion of the course. So, hopefully he'll be able to bounce back in a future competition. Oh, hey, look, it's Vance Walker. Surely that's a name that you should be familiar with by now, because it feels like I'm talking about Vance Walker every week on Ninja Lab. This time around, Vance Walker qualified for the South Central Regional just to add a, another regional under his belt, as he was the only person to beat those dreaded vertical limit holds, which for this course was referred to as the most wonderful holds of the year. I can't sing it for copyright fears, but I will say that Vance continues to show why he is a potential favorite for 
every regional final and seemingly the world championship as he got further than any other competitor. Unfortunately, when taking on the final obstacle, the Unguard, he had less than 30 seconds left and just couldn't make the first transition. It was a tough transition too, but I mean, first place, 10 points, what more can you ask? Don't forget everyone, if you want to compete in the National Ninja League, then all you have to do is go to nationalninja.com to look at the schedule of upcoming qualifying events and see if there are any nearby in your area. And don't forget, you are not restricted to any one region. You can go to any qualifier you want and try to qualify for that region. It's very simple. All you gotta do, make sure that you sign the waiver, pay whatever fee that gym is charging for their qualifier and if you're in the top two for the elite or top three if you decide to compete in any of the other divisions you're in it's an extended season this year due to everything going on in the world so there's now even more time than ever for you to try to get in good luck to everyone and so now we're going to go over two qualifiers back to back NOLA Muscle Park held their second and third National Ninja League qualifiers back to back. So that is exactly what we're going to do for Ninja Lab. We're going to go over the results back to back. Let's check it out. For the Elite Male Division, in second place was Max Feinberg. Man, it feels like Max is just trying to get as many qualifications for different regional finals as he possibly can, because this now qualifies him for the South Central Regional Final. Max, once again, as he's known to do, put on a good performance early on. Surprisingly took his time on the teeter-totter, I thought he would have got through that area a little bit faster, but unfortunately he hit a major roadblock when he got to the nunchuck floating monkey bars, which was a floating monkey bars where the handle swung, but also you had to grab from a vertical nunchuck position. He spent over one minute hanging from this thing, struggling to hook onto the next handles, and unfortunately, he just couldn't do it. He held on as long as he could, but then, after one too many misses, he just ran out of gas and fell on that portion of the course. And in first place was Jonathan Castadita. Similar to Max, Jonathan qualifies for the South Central Regional Final with this run, and NOLA had quite a challenging course. They had the audacity, and I mean that in a good way, to put a cannonball hooks almost immediately after the flying monkey bars, giving you almost back-to-back -back obstacles where you have to hook things in order to continue. And both those obstacles gave Jonathan a little bit of trouble, but Jonathan did not give up. He remained patient and focused and he was able to complete both those obstacles he was able to clear a couple of warped walls and he was able to clear most of the devil steps unfortunately when he got to the very end of that obstacle he tragically messed up the dismount and failed on that obstacle. The very end of the obstacle. Oh, it was so heartbreaking to see. He could have gone further, but he didn't. Nice. Mm. 
For Nola's other qualifier for the Elite Male Division in second place was once again Max Feinberg. Yes, Max went back to back second places at Nola, and he was once again putting on a pref impressive performance early on. He was able to get through the Cannonball Alley and was able to get up the warped wall with literally no run-up. But shockingly, when transferring from the Fidget Spinners to the Nunchucks, his right hand just missed one of the Nunchucks and he slipped right away. And you could hear him just express disappointment as he was falling. This could have been a good run for Max, but it, it just, you know, those little mistakes, you know, sometimes it's the smallest mistakes that'll get you. But with so many qualifiers under his belt, Max has a good chance of making it to the world championship. And in first place was Jordan Hatton. After finishing in third place the night before, Jordan was determined to not repeat his failure from last night. And he persevered, my friend, because he was able to get past some very tough obstacles despite hitting some adversity. He had a little bit of a hang up on the uh, heavy lily pads and he I got a bit hung up on the floating monkey bars but Jordan did not give up he was able to get further through the course than anyone but unfortunately when he got onto the harder version of the rope junction his hand just slipped and he fell early on the obstacle by the way Jonathan Castena finished in third place so between the two nights all three of the top three finish in top three both nights, and all three of them are going to the South Central Regional Finals. If you're interested in seeing the full versions of any of the runs mentioned on this episode of Ninja Lab, then all you have to do is subscribe to this YouTube channel because full versions of all the runs mentioned on every episode of Ninja Lab will be uploaded to this YouTube channel. So you can watch them all in full to see what the courses are like. And in addition, we will be uploading bonus runs from some of your favorite ninja competitors. But let's wrap things up with a take a look at TA Fitness Weymouth. My goodness, TA had a difficult course. For the elite female division, in second place was Taylor Johnson. Taylor was able to get through the floating I-beam with little difficulty, but unfortunately the obstacle that followed it was a demanding rope gauntlet where you had to use a rope on a rock climbing wall. You couldn't, your hands were not allowed to touch the rock climbing wall. Only the hands were allowed to touch the rope and the rope could touch the holds. And as a result, it was just too difficult for Taylor. She got most of the way through, but towards the end, she just, I don't know if she got unhooked or lost a grip, but she fell down and was eliminated at that point on the course. And in first place was Casey Rothschild. Casey was a very similar run to Taylor in which they cleared the I-beam uh, in approximately the same amount of time and they ended up failing on the, about the same exact place on the rock climbing wall with the rope. But the biggest difference here is that Casey was approximately five seconds faster than Taylor and sometimes that's all you need in order to secure the first place victory. And so Casey wins and gets 10 points. Like I said, TA had an incredibly difficult course for their qualifier, 
and Luke Dillon showed when he finished in second place just how challenging this obstacle course can be. So right after that rock climbing wall with the rope, you would then have to get past these little tiny balance poles that you have to move along with you in order to create a path. And then you have this really long circuit board that you have to hang from. And to top it all off, the area that Luke failed on, you have this crazy circle slider into an up for grabs bar that despite resting a whole bunch and trying his best to make that transition, Luke just couldn't get it done and was taken out at that point on the course. But an excellent effort nonetheless. This course is tough because it's very tough. And in first place was Nolan LaJoy for the elite male division. Nolan, I mean, look, this was a challenging course. You know, he took a little bit longer on those balance poles, but he was able to make up time on the circuit board. And ultimately, he was able to uh, reach the circle slider into the up for grabs uh, 45 seconds faster than Luke did. Honestly, like this has to be one of the more challenging courses that we've had this season so far and Nolan should be commended for his effort. It earned him first place and 10 more points. And because both Nolan and Luke qualified for New England Regional Final already, Matthew Bradley and Eric Mata benefit by qualifying for the New England Regional Final. Let's go, buddy. Come on. This will work. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and watch more videos of full runs and past episodes of Ninja Lab. Thank you all. I love you. Goodbye.